We're getting reaction now to the breaking news that Professor Hassan Diab, Lebanese-Canadian Professor Hassan Diab, will be required to stand trial in France. Diab is alleged to have been involved in the bombing of a Paris synagogue back in 1980. The decision today from the top court in France is the latest in a legal odyssey that has seen Diab arrested by the RCMP, extradited to France in 2014, more than three years in prison in France, and then his release when the evidence against him was ruled to be insufficient. That release was appealed and prosecutors won, which prompted this appeal. And again, the breaking news, uh, it has not sided with Diab and ruled he must ultimately stand trial. Just in, the support committee for Hassan Diab has released a scathing statement on the court decision, saying the court misrepresented evidence, misstated facts, and engaged in troubling analysis based on unfounded speculation. Diab's lawyer in Canada, Don Bain, also included a statement saying the travesty of justice continues despite clear evidence of Diab's innocence. He says this shows how political pressure trumps justice and calls on Canada's Prime Minister to put an end to what he calls a miscarriage of justice. David Cochran has been following the Diab story extensively for years and has more on the decision. Yeah, Heather, we haven't yet seen the decision. Diab's lawyers are going through it now in, in their law offices in Paris, but I've been speaking with Hassan Diab's family and who told me that they've been told their appeal has been rejected. And as you can imagine, this is a devastating and disappointing day for them because this goes all the way back to 1980 when a bomb went off inside the saddlebags of a motorcycle outside of a synagogue in Paris that killed four people and injured 40. And France has been on the hunt for a suspect for that ever since. Hassan Diab is the only person they've ever been able to identify as a probable suspect in this case. And he was arrested on France's behalf in 2008, extradited in 2014, even though the Canadian judge who sent him there said it was a weak case. And he spent three and a half years in a French prison while France investigated Diab further and the case simply fell apart. Handwriting evidence that was used to send him there was discredited. None of the fingerprint evidence they, they collected matched. And Hassan Diab has an alibi for the period of time and when this bombing happened, he was in Beirut, right? writing exams. So the case fell apart as France investigated it. They sent him home and it was appealed in no small part because of the political context around this case. It was one of the first uh, major anti-Semitic attacks on French soil. It is one of the longest unsolved terrorism cases in France. And throughout the legal proceedings, more than 20 civil society groups uh, intervened to support the appeal, saying that it was important to give the victims of this bombing a trial and not to deprive them of justice, and even arguing that if Hassan Diab truly was innocent and could prove his innocence, then he should welcome the chance to do that in court. Uh, interestingly, when this argument was heard a week ago, Heather, the Advocate General, who is a, a, a uh, a legal advisor who doesn't take sides in the French court system argued on Diab's behalf that, that the top court should overturn the lower court's order to send this to trial and, and set Diab free. Well, that was rejected. The decision came down today. Hassan Diab's also been ordered to pay 2,500 euros in legal fees uh, to cover the cost for the civil party. And now France needs to decide whether it will seek Hassan Diab's extradition a second time from the government of Canada or will it simply try him in absentia uh, to have the trial and then seek his extradition should he be convicted uh, in French courts. That was going to be my question because I've been looking through. Mm. David's written extensively on all of this, and you want, if you want background and context to this, CBCNews.ca has David's extensive reporting. But you were laying out in your most recent piece what would happen if Diab were to win, but then also if, yeah. court, if the court was to rule against him. So those last two scenarios, that's what you're suggesting could happen next in this, David? Yeah, even if Hassan, Hassan Diab had won this today, Heather, it wouldn't be over because it would have sent it back to a lower court where they could have heard yet another argument on, on the need to send him to trial. Uh, so it, it just felt to, to Diab and, and his supporters, which there's quite an extensive network which has supported him financially and emotionally and legally throughout the years, um, they just felt like this would never end. Well, the argument to send him to trial certainly carried the day in France. I'm hoping to speak to his, his lawyers in that country later today to get their interpretation interpretation of exactly what this ruling means. Um, 
but you know, Heather, you go back to even 2014 when Diab was extradited. The case was considered weak then. Ontario Superior Court Judge uh, Robert Morange called it weak and said it was unlikely um, to result in a conviction if, if it went to trial. Well, since then, all the new evidence has only provided further evidence of his innocence, including the establishment of an alibi, the further discrediting of the handwriting evidence, they say linked him to the bombing, and, and the, the total absence of fingerprint evidence, despite an abundance of fingerprints evidence collected during the investigation. French investigators said the lack of these connections were, were significant elements uh, in his discharge from French courts, uh, from French prisons several years ago. So he's 67 years old now. He has two young kids who've never known a day where their father wasn't either under investigation or in a French prison. Uh, and now they're going through this again. I mean, the view from Diab and his supporters is that this is essentially a political trial. Lawyer Don Bain last week said that they are seeking to put an innocent man on trial uh, to scapegoat him for this crime. Um, France has, has pursued this doggedly, and today they got a decision that puts quite frankly, the government of Canada in a difficult position. Because if you remember, Heather, when Diab was released, the prime minister said quite explicitly, what happened to Hassan Diab should not have happened. And now they're in a situation where a G7 ally and a NATO partner uh, could be once again requesting Hassan Diab's extradition to France.